My name is Stephen Palacini. I'm a regulated Canadian immigration consultant. And my goal with this channel is obviously to assist uh, employers, assist immigrants in aspects when they need to do their own application. So it really is about a how-to channel. Of course, I've got my lobbying efforts, uh, letters to the minister, other things like that. So I'm going to show you right now. I'm in the uh, employer portal, which is what you need to do when you have an LMIA exempt offer of employment for a foreign national. So for example, Alberta Rural Renewal Stream, you're gonna to need to create an employer portal on the IRCC account. And I've put the details on how to create the GC key and enroll as an employer in the employer portal. And I also have another video on it, so I'll link to that when I go into more depth on the startup visa and C11 exemptions. But for now, I'm just gonna show you how to do the offer of employment uh, once you are enrolled in the in the portal. The enrollment takes about five minutes. You will need your CRA business number, obviously business address, email, first name, last name of the contact on file. So I was inspired to do this video because I actually had a, an employer reach out to me and they've had an applicant that is self-represented going to be doing um, going through the rural renewal stream and the employer needs to create the employer portal because they need they get this number when they submit the offer of employment which uh, which the applicant needs to put on their uh, 1295 their work permit form okay so let's get right into it okay so <clears throat> let's say you're at the stage now where you've created your GC key You've enrolled as an employer in the portal, in the employer portal. So like I said, relevant links are in the description and link to my other video. So let's sign in here. It's gonna ask me probably a security question that I've created when making my GC keys is that you need to, um, sorry, one of the terms and conditions is you're not able to share this information with anybody else, including uh, an immigration consultant or a lawyer. So you're supposed to keep that, it's your information. If you wanna add a consultant, you can create uh, a secondary user for the account. But in most cases, that just complicates things and I recommend that employers just go through this process on their own. So this was one where I went through just to play around with uh, showing a video on the start of Visa. So what you're gonna do is once you're enrolled in the employer portal and it's active, that usually takes five minutes to confirm you're enrolled and then about a 15 minute to 20 minute delay until you can log in and see this right here, okay? You're gonna see your business number you put in there because you've, en you've enrolled as an employer. Obviously your legal name, your operating name, and then, uh, so it asks for given names. I gave it given names, but Joseph's actually my middle name. Uh, so let's access the offer of employment queue and we would want to uh, create a new offer, okay? So, access submitted, no, return to previous page. I guess you can only have one offer going at the same time? Interesting. Well, you learn something new every day, right? So that was just uh, one that I used for demonstration purposes. Okay, an error occurred. What else is new? This is story of my life. So now I have the option to submit an offer of employment and that's what you're going to click. Okay. Um, I believe because the other one wasn't completed. So I guess you can't have draft offers of employment or maybe it was just a glitch, but this is what you're going to do. So your business information will automatically be pre-populated. Okay, you're gonna to wanna to put in your business telephone number. So this is for the employers that need to get an offer of employment number for a foreign national because they're hiring them. Uh, and I'm gonna do provincial nominee case, okay? Put in your business address here put in the type of business. This is gonna be like, okay, you're incorporated, the business isn't a franchise, or it may be a franchise. Put in your, a link to your website, put in the date your business started. I usually put that as the, you know, the date of incorporation. 
describe the principal business activity. Uh, that would just be a quick description of if you're a landscaping company, you would put landscaping. If you are a um, restaurant, you put restaurant. If you're really lazy, you can just go to the North American industry classification system and just put in the code. Put in your number of employees. Most people will be under 100. Gross revenue, you put that in here as well. Okay, now you've got the primary contact is the person who will be contacted by IRCC for further information. So I would then put Joseph in here. It's my middle name. The job title, this is you, the person creating the account, the, uh, the employer. That's relatively straightforward, okay? And... Let's see, next we have foreign worker, start form. This is very critical, filling out this section, uh, because they cross-reference this uh, offer of employment number with their work permit information data. So it's very important that you put the applicant's first names that are indicated on their passport, their last names that are indicated on their passport, like their given names get their gender right, their date of birth, their country of birth, their country of residence, where they're living right now, the citizenship, and you need their passport number. So if you're doing this for a, on behalf of a foreign worker, you'll want essentially their passport information page will give you all this information that you need. Okay, and yes, of course it's not gonna work. I know, okay, so I'll go back, I'll cancel. Job details, we have, the LMI exemption title, it's T13, okay? Because they get an RT204 support letter and that puts in the exemption code. And please explain in your own words how you meet the requirements of the labor market impact assessment. Uh, the foreign worker is a provincial nominee through which program? Perhaps Rural Renewal, Rural Renewal Stream of Alberta, uh, and, and that's what you would indicate there. Um, there's not a ton of detail that is required because again, it is, uh, they'll be submitting, they should be submitting their work permit with the uh, R204 support letter. Um, but that is the exemption code that you're supposed to use. Now, job title, you would put when you're doing business owners, obviously CEO and founder, but this would be for the applicant you're hiring. So what what does it say on their offer of employment that you've given them, whether they've been nominated? Uh, it, if they're a restaurant manager, you'd put in restaurant manager. If they are nominated as a food service supervisor, you would put that there. So you put that in and then you're gonna find their not code. Okay, so I'm gonna go find the... Uh, Air transport ramp attendants, uh, utility maintenance workers, whatever their not code is, you're gonna put this in here. Let's say railway yard and truck management workers. Please provide the address of the primary physical job location. In many cases, this will be your business address. Uh, but for example, if your business and mailing address is incorporated at your home or at a co-working space or at a shared office, then you would put in the actual place where they're going to work. Um, Typically, you don't have a secondary job location. If you click yes, you'll just get the opportunity to put in another address. That would be if you wanted the applicant to be able to work or the applicant was programmed to work, let's say at two different locations. Um, expected duration of employment. This is, you can put in um, the up to three years they would issue a skilled work permit for and you don't have to put in any numbers here. Right, so you could put in up to three years. It's not, you can put in whatever you want. Uh, main duties of the job, this is going to be from obviously like their offer of employment, their letter and the not code that they're in. So just provide a brief summary of it. Uh, minimum education requirements for the job. This should match with, I would say the not code, the tier code and experience and skills required to complete the job duties. You would say what, whatever you're hiring in that position for, you would cross-reference with the job bank and and see what are the experience and skills required. Do they need education in this field? Um, is there provincial federal certification? Maybe, 
they do. Maybe they need to be licensed by the Alberta College of Pharmacists if you're hiring a pharmacy technician. But in many cases, it should be no. Uh, and yes, I will be paying the employer compliance fee. The employer has to pay the employer compliance fee. Then through here is where you then again put in the employer primary contact information again. Okay. So wage and benefits, and this will likely come straight from your offer of employment as well as anything else that you've done to, to basically give the basis upon which that applicant is able to apply for a work permit. So type of wage, uh, usually it'll be per hour. Let's say the your offer of employment to them says $25 per hour. How many work hours per day? Eight. How many work hours per week? Um, why is my math so bad? 40. Number of work hours per month. Uh, you would then have to multiply that by 4.3 technically, but you could put in 160. Overtime rate in Canadian dollars. This would be... 1.5 times the wage amount and overtime starts after 44 because I'm too lazy to do the math here but that would be uh, 37.5 right and you should probably adjust this to represent uh, 4.3 so whatever 4.3 times uh, 40 hours is 172 so and benefits if you're offering them any benefits you'll want to explain this here uh, disability you could say um, type of vacation remuneration 4% this is where you would put in the benefits of their job and then you're good to go once you're fully complete everything once you've completed the entire everything says complete 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 you're then able to click next then you sign off as the employer you pay 230 dollars for the employer compliance fee then what will happen is within five to ten minutes you'll get an email that'll show you this is the employer offer number it starts with a and it's preceded by i believe eight digits and that is the number that you will need to give to your foreign worker um, so I hope that was pretty clear on submitting an LMIA exempt offer of employment for uh, a foreign national that, that you intend to hire. I'd also like to add a final point that when you transmit the offer of employment after you've paid the $230, you will get a payment confirmation receipt. It's important that you screenshot that. Um, to save the proof of payment that you have paid the employer compliance fee. This is supposed to be submitted alongside the work permit application. So it, it is supposed to actually issue a receipt in the offer of employment queue. You should be able to access the receipt here, but they've been having technical issues for the past year uh, issuing these receipts. So what can suffice is the Moneris, uh, basically their payment processor, that window that you should screenshot so you have proof, the confirmation that you've paid, basically the payment receipt um, that the applicant could also then use to submit with their work permit application uh, in case there's any problems for them tracking down the offer of employment to match that with the work permit.